In this video, we're going to be coaching an Ascendant 2 player who's been having trouble playing a little bit too safe. This is a common problem I see amongst players who are hard suck, so I'm sure it'll help out a bunch of you guys. Anyways, without further ado, enjoy the video. Oh. Oh my god. Okay, that was kind of crazy. I would say, yeah, a safer peek. Take a safer peek here. Uh, you don't need to full, like either I would have fought halls this area or I would have just been peeking for the chamber or something like not as deep as the sofa. But I, honestly, that's a little bit over analyzing. I think it's fine. You hit, you're hitting your shots and if you're feeling good on a pistol round, that's a good way to start. I'm gonna throw arrow and I'm gonna, I'm gonna drone after. Ooh, nice shot. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> Oh my god, what the hell? Uh, mid, mid, mid. Oh my god. Do you have lineups for that? Yeah, I have okay. lineups. Okay, if you have lineups. I line mean, e even without the lineup, I just didn't put myself in a good push plant position with that rotate through Among Us. Like, you, you kind of just sat out of the entire fight. I think you commit to one, either staying to help your teammates defend site, or you, you push up Hall. Uh, you were there for a while, so I think after that a long amount of time, it was pretty clear that no one was gonna go Hall or they're already coming out site. Um, I would be careful oh, about getting very aggressive. <laughs> uh, oh, you'll, you'll see. <laughs> oh no, you swung through. No, yeah, I was just about to say, there's no need to aggress here. You guys are in 4v3. You have your Viper wall ult up. Yeah. yeah so think... my thought process here, I saw my chamber's positioning and the jet. Yeah, kind of contact with the chamber. So I was like, oh, maybe I can swing out the smoke, get a kill, and then, and then the go back, back in the smoke. Yeah. But so like after I missed the contact, I think I was still like focused on the idea of like trying to get a kill. Because then I saw the Sova and I was like, oh. I don't I think you could have fell back after the, if the Sova's positioning. If you fall back, I think it just spams you down. Right. So yeah. just not even going down that like first. I don't. Yeah, I don't think. Yeah, I think. It's just because simply it's a 4v3 and you guys are in a good position here. If you guys just maintain this, you guys probably win. All right, so you clear this. Nice. Oh, uh, I don't think you needed to peek that. I think this is like, I get this. I don't think he's going to wallbang you. I would have taken the gamble. I'm like, you're not fucking going to kill me here through the wall yeah that that actually you're probably right and that's what my thought process was because I, I when i wrote down i was like yeah if you know he's he's offing and uh -huh. he's holding me then mm -hmm. don't peek it so yeah yeah it's just that the wall wing bullet was kind of close so yeah I, I feel the pressure here but i think like logically thinking it's like if you hit it fuck it you're but you just you just you just deserve it man like it's unlucky but like it's pretty hard to hit especially if you're not I mean, even if you stood in the same spot what's the odds he's gonna shoot the exact same spot twice it's, it's kind of hard no matter what he has to kind of guess and he has to hit you through the head and and every second that you're alive, this Viper gets more and more fucked. Because, like, your teammates are scaling like this. And he's now, look, look at his attention, is focused on you. And also, every second that you get, you get more time on your gas. You can put this orb up again. I think a lot of playing halls properly is understanding when you need to get a kill versus when, you, when your existence is enough. And in this case, I feel like your existence is enough it clears all of this back site area uh the stairs guy can't like play on the top of the stairs to try to fight because you can just swing him like this is how much control you have just by existing indoors nice oh yeah i remember this one too okay I, I i have a feeling i know what you're gonna say but i hope oh wait what the I'm, fuck is going on uh this is a b hit this is uh i want to get out of sight but now you're out of gas yeah so you gotta stall no 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 yeah don't don't yeah, i think you just don't need to take a fight so because the reason i'm saying this is you guys got to pick you up you guys are by the way are selling the shit out of this a fake you guys got the kill you guys are actually making noise on site i guarantee that your teammates are gonna walk onto a free site so basically once you do this i think maybe around here i would have left maybe you don't have this feeling of fear but in my case i went while i was watching this i was like i don't need to be here anymore there's no reason i have nothing to defend if I can get out, that would be the best case because we have a free open B site and then we're just like a 5v4 uh, retake with the B site. Something that I noticed that play like Xander does, he pretty much for one game I, I watched he played, he always kept one of his abilities mm. right for the A retake. When do you think like what goes into the decision making of like choosing when I should put both my things on B site versus having one? Um, I will normally keep my wall. The, because the wall is much more useful toward retaking A. I have a play style where I will sit uh, and I'll put the orb here, right? And then I'll play toward the back half of the half well, behind you. 
and I'll jump spot. Yeah. I'll orb, like if I see anybody, orb up immediately, molly into the orb uh, and back up. And then like, if, if anything, if they're coming out, then I'll throw up the wall. And then like, if you think about the wall like this, then I can play toward this half of the site and allow for the retake. And the retake is pretty strong because you still have the orb for B main and you have this wall here that allows your teammates to get close onto site. Yeah, it looks like it's, eh? <laughs> Uh, this round is saddening for sure. Okay, I they're dark. Bad. All right, let's see. They're darting A here. We get one to B. Oh no, walked up elbow. I, I do think you should have probably been aware of that. So you can either play like here, which is pretty, and then like alternate when you want to peak mid, you pop the orb real quick or you play half wall. Okay, so we're fighting for mid here. I think that is the assumption. The reason why I don't like this wall, and I get it because you said to rotate, right? But the thing is, what, what's going to happen is every other option that where you die doors is because there's a guy lurking here or a guy lurking here. This wall doesn't do anything but deter them, uh, but, but like stop them from peeking, killing you right away. They'll just hear you. They'll hear you, right? If they're here or they're here, they're going to hear you. So I think a lot of the times, I don't think this wall is super good because they'll just wait. If they were already planning on lurking or watching the flank, then they'll just sit there and lurk and watch the flank. This wall doesn't change their plans. If anything, it gives you a false sense of security that it is clear. Wall up again. Uh, what, what was the reasoning you rotated, you stopped playing B? Honestly, I don't even know. I, I usually it's because we get stomped at A, but I don't even think we're really getting stomped at A. So. No, it wasn't too bad. So it probably was just a, honestly, just an autopilot. But this round, I was Mimo on the arena a bit. After looking at this VOD, I definitely was in the wrong too, where we definitely should have, I think, waited for the flank, the chamber flank on the retake. It was just funny because he called it after he died. I think the reason why I rushed though, um, like see after this chamber kill right here with the uh -huh. slow, I feel like I was scared that the Silva was going to get timing here at half wall. So I wanted to get to a position where I could cover his back. Yeah, I uh Spend the time while you're waiting for the chamber to spam the smoke, see if you get lucky. And then if you <laughs> likely you don't get lucky, whatever, but your chamber, you set it up for an easier 3v3. I don't think running, walking through the smoke is, I mean, the slow is really the way to go. I think there could be more that you could be paying attention to. I, the state of the game, understanding the state of the game and where you, where you yeah, need to position yeah. yourself and what you need to do in order to get in a better percentage chance of winning. We have three here a lot. Maybe you want to read a little bit more into what the opponent is doing. There's some rounds where I'll just play and I'm like, did they never come in? I just like shift to being playing, cheating like right off the bat. This had nothing really to do with your individual performance. Your individual performance was pretty solid. We had to up everyone else's. Like we had to kind of up these two and being a little bit more involved. It, it doesn't have to be necessarily like frag wise, but there's definitely something that is going on that like is making their lives harder. Like calling for aggression here, uh, asking for a dart here so that when you walled mid there, you'll be like, hey, can we push mid here? I'm gonna push elbow, something like that. Um, not always playing stagnant of thinking I'm anchoring site. Cause do you remember when you were playing B and they never went B? Yeah. yeah. So what you want to do there, if, if that happens, you don't always, you don't always have to play for the site and be the dedicated anchor. Uh, what can happen is you just play retake. It's like, yo, I'm gonna play retake for B this round. And we're let, let's double push up mid and double or double put walk up elbow. These things like, rather than always thinking I sit here, I molly here, I defend until I die. Or, and then the next thing is I run mid, I wall here, and I retake until we lose or win or lose. Like that, those are like kind of the scenarios you're stuck in. Make make more scenarios, create more scenarios. Get a dart here, find out if they're A early. No, okay, and then I'm sitting here. Hey, whoever's next to me, rotate, leave. We'll just play retake A. I had a recent coaching se a session where I got coached by 100 Thieves Stellar. I, I was running into the same issue, similar to where you are, where he was just like, you're playing really safe. And I was like, is that bad? He's like, no, all the plays make sense. Like your, your logic makes sense. But he says that over the course of multiple, like your Valorant career, if you always play the same way, you don't learn anything. Find out how much you can get away with. If you start pushing and they're never there to defend, you have to find that out. Test the boundaries. Yes, you might lose a few games, but in the end, in the long term, you will get better.